first, uh, I was just thinking about Mark Mazel and a terrible event uh, came to mind. I'd been uh, the weekend at their church. Yeah, right. And we'd had a really good time, it was a long time ago, this was up uh, in Beverly. And uh, I got a phone call during the week to say that she had washed and ironed my underpants <laughs> that I'd left on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> in the bedroom I'd slept in on that night. So it's a pleasure. It was, a, <laughs> it's an honor. It was an honor. <laughs> an honor. <laughs> So, uh, um, so every time I see you, Hazel, uh, that, uh, uh, I have a vision of underpants. Uh, I mean, you just don't know. Uh, and I think there were holy ones as well. <laughs> <laughs> there was the Mickey Mouse pictures. Uh, there was the Mickey Mouse pictures on it that uh, sealed the deal. So, fabulous. Uh, Mark has always been to me a, a source of encouragement. And uh, so, uh, some of them, you know, you know, there are people that give you a, a word of encouragement, but they hit you deep. That kind of thing. And so, Mark, what a great joy to invite you now to our church and uh, to have you here this morning speaking. Shall we give him a stake next? <laughs> Yeah. 
When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what was happening to them. Years ago, in the early 1950s, a man stood at the front of a rickety old shed in a place called Cleavis in Lancashire. The rickety old shed was in fact the Labour Club. The man who was a pioneer pastor. And life hadn't been really good for him. In fact, at one time in his life, he was hospitalised and close to death. And from that time being in hospital, which he came out and thanking God for penicillin at the time, he found himself in a place that he couldn't put any weight on at all. He was weak quite a lot of the time. And basically, when you look at pictures of this man, he was a walking skeleton. So there he was, one evening in Cleavers in Lancashire, with about 20 people in an old shack that was the Labour Club. And he began to share his heart about this very passage that I've read to you today. He read through and then came to a point. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, I give you. And at that point in time, what he describes as fire hit his feet <laughs> and came right up through his body and out through his hands and through his head. And from that moment on, from that moment on, that man started to put weight on. He started to build muscle on his body and he was 100% healthy. I stand before you in the storehouse Skegness today because of the healing power of God, because instead of that man passing away, he lived and became my father. This is what we're talking all about, folks. There's nothing airy-fairy about God and his power. There's something of a dynamic nature that when we give God some space in our life, and we say to you, come Holy Spirit, touch our lives, we need to be in a place where we're expecting the impossible to happen. What a day to be alive. These two men we've just read about had nothing, but they gave everything. I want to inspire you to take a fresh look at your daily life. As Christians, it's lovely to be together. It's lovely to sing our, our worship songs. It's lovely to read God's Word. Brilliant to share communion together. But this is for about an hour and a half, two hours on a Sunday morning. The Christian life is 24-7. It carries on throughout the week. Can you begin to imagine if we could take what we have experienced this morning and take that out into our daily life throughout the week so that other people can be experiencing something of the presence of God because we are stood at the side of We're sat in our computer in our office and mayhem is going on all around us, yet peace pervades around our workstation and something the blessing of God begins to fall. We're in a shop and we're serving customers with the beans and carrots and everything else. But as they're passing by, they're receiving their goods from us at the till, yet the blessing of God is coming upon their life. Mm. With God, all things are possible. I'm a Christian. I declare I am. I respect all the religions, but because I'm a Christian, that has been my decision, and I believe I'm right to be a Christian. And with that, with that, I believe in a one and only God who sent his one and only son, Jesus, to pay the price for my sins so that I can know life for eternity and also to enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to live out your days, come day, go day? Wake up, go to sleep, have free meals? Or do you want to live out your days knowing the dynamic of the Holy Spirit of God in your life, yeah. that you see things differently, you see the un- you see the unseen, you hear things differently, you hear the unheard, and God is using us to bless His creation. Secondly, what a day to be alive with a packed lunch. <laughs> Recorded in John chapter six, verse one to fourteen, we read of five thousand men gathered, and also the families as well. So it's quite a large crowd. And the disciples, all of a sudden, decided, how are we going to feed these? And Jesus, 
if, if you read, it's, it's fascinating when, when, when you read about this. Jesus, the one and only Son of God, asked this question. Why, guys, where can we buy bread? It's there in the scripture. What a statement to me. But I believe that God has a sense of humour. And Jesus was being a little bit mischievous here. Because the apoplexy and shock that must have beset his disciples at that time. There's thousands. It takes loads of bakery shops to feed this lot. What are we going to do? And then on that day, a, a little boy had decided he wanted to see what was going on. And so he said to his mother, I'm going out for the day. I'm going to see what all these crowds following Jesus is all about. And his mother said, don't forget your pack up. You need your pack up. So she packed quite carefully, and it wasn't in a Tupperware box. <laughs> Five loaves and two fish. And the little boy went off to this event. Five loaves and two fish. A Mac Galilee meal special. He had in his hand. And one of the disciples, Andrew, said, there's a lad here with his pat lunch. You see, I, I like Andrew. I like the fact that he's seen thousands of people. He actually made a statement. There's a lad here with a pat lunch. How many of us this morning, can I bring the challenge, would have been prepared to say there's a lad here with a pat lunch? <laughs> Do you know, I love scripture. <laughs> My dad taught me, he says, look, you've got to picture this. Picture scripture. Can I encourage you? As you read your Bible, try and picture the scenes on these things. It illuminates. It really comes to life. I see this little lad here with his little pack up in a sack or whatever. And Andrew is saying, there's a lad here. Five loaves and two fish. Some of the disciples might have thought, smarty alley. What a nutter. <laughs> But others said no, but Jesus knew what he could do with five loaves and two fish. What are you doing with your pat lunch this morning? We live in a nation where we're told we're not capable, we haven't got the ability. We live in a nation where so often we're pressed down and pressed down and pressed down. We think we've got nothing, nothing to give, nothing to share, nothing to do. But the reality is, every one of us is a creation of God. And if we can step out in faith and have a faith like Andrew this morning, and say, look here, there's a lad with five loaves and two fish. And we see the thousands, we see the massive situations, we see the massive problems. But we know God is on our side. What can God do with your pat lunch today? Thirdly, what a day to be alive. To have faith for a miracle to take place. People travel thousands of miles to see evangelists, which is brilliant, see miracles performed. I've done it myself and benefit from them. But do you know, folks, we can experience miracles given by God every day. In wherever we are, in our workplace, in our homes. There was a little girl. A nation had been taken over by an enemy. And this little girl became a servant in a household where the lady in charge of the house, her husband, was called Naaman. Naaman was the commander of the army, of this force that had taken him over. But he had a really bad skin problem. King James calls it leprosy. Theologians talk about it as a really bad psoriasis type condition. Whatever, this guy's skin was in a right old state. So it's a little girl, start to picture this, in her home, doing servant stuff. The big man of the house, commander of the army, really manky skin. And this little girl, probably in her prayer time, thought, he needs to go and see a prophet and get healing. So what did she do? She told the mistress of the house about this and what have you. And then Naaman was told about this. And he was told 
to go off and find this prophet. He, the king of Aram even sent a letter with him to say, look, you go and ask to be healed. So a man called Naaman, a very powerful man, had been told by a little unknown girl, in fact the Bible doesn't record her name, to go and seek some healing in prayer from his prophet. Eventually he goes, and as he's coming to his prophet's home, the prophet sent a ser servant out to him and said, go and jump in the river seven times. It's a bit extreme, isn't it? Would I, would you this morning, and this is the challenge, be prepared to share something extreme into somebody's life if God told us to say it? This shakes up our Christian faith, our comfort zones, our, our, our zones where we feel at ease so often because what we're reading about here is a little girl whose name isn't even mentioned, having a faith in God that she know could do something amazing in the life of Naaman and saying go and get some prayer. So this powerful man arrives, told by the servant, not by the prophet, go jump in the river seven times. And he thought, sat down, I'm keeping me rough skin. He starts to go back, but his servant said, no, wait up, wait up, listen, you go and get this done. So he bobbed down in the water first, nothing happened. Second, and we know the story, didn't it? Right the way through to the seventh, and then he came up with his skin healed. Mm. The challenge to me this morning, folks, is how often am I prepared to pray for a miracle? How often am I prepared to be in a place where I suggest to someone they can see a miracle performed by God in their lives? This is the whole dynamic of what's going on. Picture this today across our nation. Go to Skegness. If you go to Skegness, you'll find healing there at a place called the Storehouse. It's on the seafront. They do nice coffees. The tea's not bad either. But keep on walking through and, and, and go into the auditorium and, and ask somebody for prayer. There's a man on the door that gives you a really lovely answer. Ask him, he'll do. Forget it, what about that nice lady who's doing, who's doing on the, the, all of this on, on the back of the screen, Maury? She's really good on the mic, isn't she, Maury? Go, go and ask her. What's about the lady on the third row? Or the fourth row? Or the fifth row? Or any of us? There's a place called Pensacola in America where for years and years and years the pastoral church prayed for miracles to take place and nothing happened. This pastor used to be there every Saturday night and he sought God and sought God and sought God and said, please God, let something take place, nothing happen. But that pastor was persistent in prayer. One Sunday morning, it was a Father's Day, he had a visiting preacher, and all of a sudden, bang, the Holy Spirit came in power. And the rest is history. I visited that church at the time, it was absolutely amazing, life-changing for us. But it was just a motley little town on the coast. Nothing special about Pensacola. In fact, there's nothing special about the church either. That was pretty ordinary and ordinary. They had to build lots of other additions to it to accommodate people. But the thing about it is, as soon as you walked in that car park, the presence of God hit you. Where the presence of God is, there's something very unique in happen in our life. The storehouse getting us this morning. This is a place we can bring our friends to, our relatives, our neighbours. It's a beautiful, beautiful venue. But we can bring them into a beautiful venue and they can encounter God. They can see their needs met. They can see their lives changed. And one day, one day this place will be famous across the nation. People will travel to come here because God can touch their life. What a day to be alive, to take on a giant, whatever form that giant may be. What is your giant today? What has got a hook on your life?
In the workplace, are you happy? In your community, are you happy? Is something in your life the giant, however you describe it? We read of the little boy who went to visit his brothers to take them some food. He finds himself in the middle of a right old situation going on. On, on one hill there was the Philistines, on the other hill was the Israelites, and in, in between was this valley. But every day, consecutively, this giant of a, of a soldier came out and challenged the Israelites. Get over here, who's brave? Come on, you soppy wops, get over here, I'll take the lot of you on. And the thing is, the Israelites, they, they, they were lived in fear. One day, a little boy, a little boy, a teenager, came with some food for his brothers. Listen to what was going on and said, Huh, he's only a big bloke. Bigger they are, easier they fall. It was a revelation that, and even to the king, the king said, no, no, no. He said, look, I, I can go in the name of the Lord and sort this out. The king tried to dress him up in all this armory. Rubbish. Didn't fit him for one thing, but also it was too heavy. All that little boy needed was a sling and one stone. Interesting that he had gathered five up to go in there for him. But he went before Goliath, this giant, and in the name of the Lord, he let a stone fly out and dead Goliath. Can I ask us here this morning, do we allow giants to bully us in our life? For some of us, it's memories. They're our giants. Experiences that we've had that have a grip upon our life, that have a holding point on our life. For others, it's people in positions of power in our workplace. We go to work in fear, we come away from work in fear. For others, it can be financial situations that have a hold upon us in our life. Whatever our giants are, folks, those giants will fall. Two years ago now, Hayes and myself, we found ourselves with a massive bill that had to be paid. And the thing about it is we didn't have the money. It was a giant to us at the time. And I've been praying about it and having a moaning, groaning to God, why haven't we got this and why haven't we got that? And it still hadn't come. I was driving on the A15 back to Lincoln one day and having a, a prayer with God, which at the time was a genuine moan, I've got to confess. When a great peace came into my car, it's a Citroen Picasso, it's not a Maserati, it's just a Citroen Picasso, yet the peace of God filled that car. Physically, I felt it in the car. And it wasn't a spoken word, but I, I could hear it, as it were, within the spirit, I have already provided for you. So I thought, well, that's far more use. <laughs> we can be honest with God, you know. But I arrived, I arrived home, and on the final bit of going home, Instantly into my mind, I thought of two shoe boxes we had in the wardrobe at home. We had a need, and a moment of God, I've already provided. I thought of two shoe boxes in our wardrobe at home. In those shoe boxes was jewellery and trinkets and things like that that had been left to us by our parents who, who had passed away. Did we look at them? No. Did we use them? No. Two shoe boxes in the wardrobe. I did the same thing when I got in, but they say, Mark, look what's been pushed through the door today. So I said, What's this? She said, It's an A5 leaflet from some auctioneers. They'll come to our house if we've got any jewellery or trinkets, and, and they, they'll, they'll get, get a valuation on them, and they'll sell them at an auction if we want. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let's invite this, this man round as I'm trying to find the two shoe boxes in the wardrobe. Found them. Set them out on the living room table. I've got to say, here's will set them out because they're sitting out far better than me. <laughs> this man turned up, looked at them, and said, Yeah, we can sell those for you. Right, this was a giant that needed coming down. The man took the stuff away and it went to auction. And the full value of our bill was received plus 30 quid. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to illustrate this morning that our giants don't need to take the physical form of a person. They can be 
giants in our life that need sorting out. But we call upon the Lord, we're persisting to pray. We call upon the Lord, persisting yeah, to pray. Yeah. We can have a groaning, groaning. We can tell God, oh, come on, this is coming too late. But believe me, when the dynamic of God begins to touch our lives, yeah. and we really take God for being God, two jolly shoeboxes of bits and bobs and jewellery <laughs> can turn into a big bill being paid with 30 quid on the top that we went out and had a celebratory meal. I'm here to declare this morning in the storehouse, in the nest, whatever giants you've got in your life, God can sort it. Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing is too big for God, but sometimes we really have to just wake up, like I had to wake up, in a car on the A15, I've got to wake up and say, God, you are God, the impossible is possible, yeah. healings can come, in the name of Jesus, yeah. finance can come, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So over five years ago now, I asked God, I said, God, please, I love being with Christians, you're a great group of people, I love the Holy Spirit. But Pastor Dave, I, I want to experience the Holy Spirit outside of church doors, in the workplace, in the community. So I asked, and guess what? It's starting to happen. I can write books already of what I'm experiencing. I wake up and say, thank God I'm alive in the morning. Second thing is, you know, come Holy Spirit. The things I've seen in these past five years, I tell you, are incredible. I've seen healings. I've seen suicidal people released from a spirit of death and come to know Jesus. I've seen people in workplace, in, 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 in clinics where I've been working, touched by God. They don't know what's going on, but I know it's the Holy Spirit touching the life. Yeah. I've seen answered prayer for people in relationship problems, wanting kids, having babies. Why? Because there's a bloke called Mark who pleaded, said, God, please, Holy Spirit, would you come and be with me? And you know, he has never let me down. Hallelujah. So good. I'm not very good with keys. I lose them. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Here's who will, will bear witness to this. The number of times I've been able to find things. I was doing a project for a health authority. I had to do a presentation to this health board. And I knew there was one illustration that really would make the end of my presentation brilliant, Dave. I'd done a project two years previously and I thought, that is just perfect, perfect for the ending. Could I find it? No, I could not. High and low, I looked at No, I couldn't. I went to bed one night. As I'm thanking God for the day, I just felt the Holy Spirit say to me, go down to your office, there's two boxes under your desk, and it's in the second box, pull the top out and it's there. So what do you do? Just turn on and think, oh, that was good. good thought. No. I got out of bed, went down to my office, second box, and there was the full project. <laughs> Why should the Holy Spirit do that? Because the Holy Spirit has been sent to be a comforter, to fellowship with us, to inspire us, to help us, not just on a Sunday, but throughout the week. Got it? In closing, if we can see this touch our lives, we can be men and women of fire that get out into our community. Yeah, yeah. A shopping experience can be different for somebody because we are there. Do we want to serve God? Do we want this empowerment of the Holy Spirit to fresh upon our life? Yeah. Good works are brilliant. I love charity works. But good works with the anointing of God upon them. That's why we were blessed with Battelle and other great organizations like that. Because they serve the purpose of mankind, but they serve their spiritual needs. I am stood before an army regiment today. Yeah. A group of people, whatever your age, young and old. Who, if you could take a few moments in your life and have a chat with God and say, God, I am willing, I am willing to be one of those kind of people. Could see so many lives changed. I don't want an epitaph on a tombstone one day that just says, good bloke. <laughs> <laughs> or I told you I was ill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want something that just says, Mark Hudson, servant of God, and that'll do me. Because tell you, I have told you this morning, but you know, that's okay, but it's not enough. What each of us need in our lives is the applause of heaven. Yeah. 
When you've got half a dozen angels chasing after you, applauding you, you'll feel good about that. Mm. <laughs> I would, <wasn't> it? <laughs> But the thing about it is, it's been there, folks, this morning. It's just seeing ourselves in a place of saying, yes, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to be in a place where you take us and see the great things taking place. So in closing, there was a little boy called Samuel who found himself in a temple. Have you noticed how all these people appear to be unassuming people? Not in sort of the heights of everybody knows them or whatever, but, but this lad was serving in a temple. And one day, he felt God had spoken to him. So he went off to me and said, hey, um, I think don't know what's going on, somebody's talking to me a bit about this, and he said, go back and listen again. And he did this, we, we know he repeated it, and then he said, next time you go back, say, speak, Lord, for your servant ears. For us in our lives, it's our inheritance from God to know the blessings of God to be rich upon our lives. It's right for us to see the unseen, to hear the unheard, when God gives us those opportunities. And I want to serve the purpose of God and be as effective as I can. I want to be in a place where every day is good, that it's great to be alive, it's good to be alive, because it's serving the purposes of God. And so I want to challenge us all today to take a fresh look at our lives, are you happy with your lot? Are you content with what you've got? Or, as in the words of a great man called Smith Wigglesworth, have you got an insatiable appetite for more of the things of God? The Holy Spirit of he makes all the difference. And in closing, I want to bring a challenge. Let's just close our eyes. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. So the challenge is this, it's very simple, we've got our eyes closed. If you today would like to invite the Holy Spirit of God to come and touch your life afresh, if you today would be willing to say, God, would you use me with my pack up, with my time, with a cup of tea, with a kind word, would you use me in my shopping time, in my school time, in my work time, to serve your purposes? I invite you to stand with me as I'm standing here at the front. Where you are, you just stand there. This is your decision. This is your decision. This is your decision. We come as we are. And then I'm going to pronounce a blessing over you. In sure and certain knowledge, nothing to do with me because God does this. That at this moment, at three minutes past 12 on the 21st of July, 2019, something will happen in your lives that will be a reference point for the rest of it. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you. I thank God for you. I thank God that you are called to be part of the storehouse in Skegness. An oasis of blessing for this town, for this region, and for the nation. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus to be empowered, body, soul, and spirit, 
with the blessing of God to serve his purposes. I bless you to be awake afresh in the spirit. To be willing to see God as God wants to be seen. To be used by God to meet the needs of society and to see the release of lives. I bless you in the name of Jesus to be ministers of God's blessing, channels of the anointing, carry, carry, carry the anointing of God and see Skegness better for I bless you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.